Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about Venusaur, which received another buff on the Solar Beam in the latest patch. It now deals even more damage. And honestly, Venusaur might just be the best mage in the game now. When I say mage or lane attacker, you know. Um, it has two very strong builds with Petidance or either Solar Beam. We still play Giga Drain and Solar Beam as well, or I prefer to play Giga Drain and Solar Beam build just to have a bit more survivability. For the head items, I run Choice Specs, Muscle Band, and Focus Band. For Petidance, you would obviously run Buddy Barrier instead of Choice Specs. So you can also just always be like, I could just play Buddy, Focus, Muscle every game, and then depending on what I see in the enemy team, I could adjust it. But in this bit, I would also recommend Eject Button while in Petidance full heal. So, yeah, I think... Compared to other mages, I think Solar Beam Venusaur is quite, quite strong right now. It has very good objective secure. Landing phase is quite okay. You just have to make it to level 7. And afterwards, you will start doing a lot of, lot of damage, right? Which, I mean, sometimes getting level 7 can be difficult. Right now, we like, like against the Blissey. And Blissey lanes are so difficult. Blissey is such an oppressive Pokemon, I feel like, right now. Even just the early game, it just takes no damage. It does a lot of damage. It has very good healing. It has very good sustain. And it also has very good last hitting with Pound, right? And, uh, and Blissey is just so hard to play against, especially when you have like a lane weak partner like also an Eevee. Of course, when he gets to Sylveon, you're going to have a much easier time. So I'm going to have him do this Corpfish fast. I will try not to take any experience from this to make sure he gets level 4. And now we're ready for the beast. We see the enemy jungler's top lane on the minimap of the Greninja. So we don't have to be too scared. I'm just going to start auto-attacking it and just try to get as many as I can with the Hyper Voice as well. Use the Razor Leaf. And we actually get the Big B. We do get it. Now Blissey is already level 4, which means it's going to be super, super hard to deal with. But our Hyper Voice Savion is also quite strong. So compared to what are the other best mages, you know, we have like Nine Tails, who's a good mage, Pikachu, Sylveon. Those are pretty much the best ones currently in lane, I would say. And uh, here we just get taken down. There's the Pound boost out attack damage of Blissey compared with the Delphox damage. And yeah, we do get taken down, don't have Giga Drain yet. Which means we're quite squishy. So that's why I still like Giga Drain as well. Giga Drain just helps us not be super, super squishy. Why without Giga Drain, we're just absolutely glass cannon, right? And if you get jumped, like this this meta right now has a lot of all-rounders and speedsters, or especially all-rounders, right? Like Lucario, Serena, Machamp, that all just jump you. Enemy jungles as well with Greninja jumping on you. A Greedent running you down. Some people still play Blastoise as well. And I think if you just don't have any, like, self-sustain, it's quite, quite difficult to play. And I think Sludge Bomb is not even that good of an ability. It has quite low range. It takes a long time to, you know, get flown out or get thrown out. So I still just much, much prefer the Giga Drain. And this also allows us to still run Muscle Band quite easily. Like, I can still do a lot of auto attack damage. I can stay in fights, auto attack, auto attack, auto attack, look for Giga Drains, and then find some Solar Beams as well. I don't have to be too scared. I don't have to play too back liney. I can still be a bit front line. You have to be careful, obviously. Solar Beam doesn't reset Giga Drain. So, um, your Giga Drains will not be as effective, like, you know, as effective as, as saying Paladins, because Paladins will use the cooldown of Giga Drain. So you always have a small time window of after gear drain where you take no damage, but I think that could be always quite enough and the healing as well together with to make you live. They found a nice cave with the razor leaf, and now we have our solar beam unlocked. So we always want to try to be level 7, obviously, for the first dreadnought, because solar beam also allows us to maybe steal dreadnought away in case it looks bad. Getting level 7 can be quite difficult though. Um it's not very easy sometimes to get it. I'm just gonna look for some poke now. I'm gonna start doing this as well. Muscle band also allows us to start doing dread. Cause Muscle Band does a lot of damage to high HP targets, but my team actually is getting ran over right now, and it's looking quite, quite bad for us. I still to start doing it for now. Another guy goes down. I'm going to keep my Solar Beam for now. Um, here, there's the Gear Drain. Gear Drain, my champ, and you saw, he, like, he almost did no damage to me there. Just thanks to my Gear Drain. I'm going to start out attacking him, trying to get a kill. I'm looking for the Solar Beam steal now, and I actually get it. I don't know how I got it, because I was actually resetting an HP, but we get the Dread now, we secure the game, or like we secure the first Dread, and with that... You know, if you lose that Dreadnought there, it might have been already game. That's what I mean with Solar Beam, just being a very good last hitting tool as well, right? Similar to other things. Now we're almost level 9, and there you saw Giga Drain doing a lot of work as well, I think. Um, you can understand, like, I, I actually can stand too much hemp, right? I don't have to run away from him, necessarily. As supposed to, if I'm Stutch Bomb, I'm kind of just, like, half HP instantly from one dynamic punch auto attack. But if I had a Giga Drain before, I don't take as much damage. So, still, I auto attack a lot in this build. This Trevin is going very deep, looking for Solar Beam. Also try to... I never auto-aim my abilities, but I guess you guys can auto-aim your abilities, right? If you're not too used to the character. Um, if you're if you're getting start used to a character, I would always aim it. Like, I always pretty much try to aim all of my skill shots as much as I can. And... We just, you know, help you be still more accurate at some point. Here we do miss it, though. Um, of course, you can also be prone to miss it on when someone walks in a straight line sometimes, because you think they might be sidestepping it. And we get a nice kill here. Another one kill. My Blaster is going to score 40 points here, but in this scenario, I'm still not killing the goal. There's currently this Audino up, there's Audinos on the right side, 
And honestly, my blasters could even pick up some more coins right here and score even more points. But honestly, like I'm someone who can't invade, right? Like if I walk to the enemy side for their Audinos, I have no chance. So I just take all these Audinos. Now I have three more. Now I could maybe decide to break the goal, but there actually is a Greninja here. And I'm just going to unite with him. <laughs> Kiha Drain, he also unite moves me. And we barely live. I didn't expect Greninja to be sneaking in this brush. That was not the best unite either. But if I die there, he's going to score a lot of points on my side. So I probably should have not face checked. I was just checking if someone is defending the goal to see how many people are there. Because after getting all those Odinos, it would have been fine timing to kill the goal, right? Um, looking for another Giga Drain. But this time, my Giga Drain actually, I don't think it hit in time. And we get taken down. My team is just not ready, and I just, I'm just overextended. Again, you're still pretty squishy, doesn't matter what. So, totally my fault. I should not be on the enemy side of the map when a dread is about to spawn. Um, obviously, my team should also be around, but that's not my team's fault that I'm dying there. I mean, it kind of is, but in the end, not really. I could have just adjusted my plan, just be much more safe. Um, so, in the end, it's still my fault. Even if your team doesn't rotate, it should be the correct play, and be there just in time so you can, like, you know, you have advantage over it. You have to adjust to it, right? And if I'm not adjusting, then it's my fault. Looking for some Giga Solar Beams now. We want to hit level 13. Level 13 is you get Solar Beam Plus. And there the cooldown gets reduced by quite a lot. So we can just spam Solar Beam after Solar Beam after Solar Beam. So you just want to be level 13 as fast as possible if you somehow can. Don't have your Night Move up here. So I kind of have to stay back looking for some max range Solar Beams. Didn't really do much there. But actually Giga Drain. This time my Giga Drain steal the Dread. I probably should have kept my Solar Beam there as well for the last hit. Um, but my team, we actually start to win the team fight. And my champ is going to kill the goal now with 40. I think he could have probably waited a bit and we could have had a bigger overcap. Like we could have let Blastoise score 30 or let the Dead Fox score 30. But we can just maybe move towards the second base now. I still have Unite move and I think I could use it one more time. So, but yeah, actually it, did, it looked quite doomed. So I was looking forward, thinking about it. But then the enemies just all appeared. Our my champ just dies and there's like now. I'm still, I think I'm still Unite moving here right here, which I think is a mistake. I shouldn't Unite move here. Um, it's quite, quite late. But, man, the CC of these two Pokemon together as well, like Perma Egg Bombed, Perma Horn Leech, is actually so annoying. And this problem with, this problem with Venus as well, your hitbox is just like the biggest ever, right? You're a very big Pokemon, and dodging things can be very, very difficult. You just get hit by everything. So, pretty, actually pretty bad. I need to farm my Unite move up now. I'm only at 25%. I should have just, not, I should have just died there. Like, often it's the better play to just die, and, you know, not... You see Unite move, because Unite move is so much more valuable than just being alive sometimes. But the bees are luckily up, and every single small bee gives you energy recharge on your Unite move. So whenever Unite move is not up, just try to look for bees instantly. And you can already see we are already back to 60% very, very fast. Now you see all the Corpfishes up. I'm going to obviously line up these two and just make them sure that my, my Solar Beam hits both of them. And you can see even Venusaur has a pretty okay long Unite cooldown. Um, but even with this... If we just kill all these small things on the map, our Unite Proof is pretty much back up. Now we're at 90%. Obviously, still have to wait a bit. I could maybe go for another Corpfish. I'm just going to start poking over the wall right here. Going to hit the Blissey once. He's very low. And I'm going to keep looking for this Blissey. It's very important with this bit as well to keep moving your camera. You can see I'm moving my camera, looking for the Blissey. I actually max range snipe him. That was a very nice kill on the Blissey. He didn't even see it coming. Didn't expect it. Now I have too, too much champ and Trevenor on me. I'm just going to Unite with myself to get the unstoppable. My champ, you with this Unite. Look for another Solar Beam, but sadly he was a bit too far. A bit too fast. So I'm gonna start attacking Zeptos here. They still have a Greninja alive, uh, but he's being chased down, so we still have to do Zeptos right here. We have Sylveon Unite, Defox Unite, and uh, Blissey's running in now. I still have Solar Beam as well, so I'm pretty confident I can hopefully get the secure with a high chance. There's the Solar Beam, and we get it before the Egg Bomb hits. Manchamp now very mad. Tries to chase me down, but the Giga Drain helps me to just be alive for quite a long time. You can see, without Giga Drain, I would have just died there. If I had Sludge Bomb, I would have had no chance against him. Um, of course, he would have been maybe slow by my sludge bomb, but he has unstoppable effects. He won't really care too much. I said he can't make it, but my team makes it. They surrender, and uh, we win the game. Solid game, 107k damage. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!